Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, the first question I have is for any of you. J.A. Solar, a Chinese-owned green energy giant whose chairman is tied to the Chinese Communist Party, has leased a lot of land in Phoenix, Arizona. They plan to construct a $60 million solar panel factory that I have been told will be poised to benefit from huge green energy tax credits included in the Inflation Act. Jin Biofeng, chairman and CEO of the Beijing-based company, said that he had been a CCP member for 40 years. According to a February 24, 23 Forbes article, Chinese companies in the green energy space are allowed federal tax incentives and other benefits to the tune of millions of dollars thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act passed by Congress and signed into law by President Biden last year. The article says, if you're making solar panels or EV car batteries, the government will help you. That includes China's companies. So my question to any one of you, does indeed the Inflation Act allow Chinese-owned companies like JA Solar to get tax credits and grants? Do any of you know? Uh, yes, it certainly does. And part of the problem is there's no requirement of where those products are coming from. So they can use all their existing Chinese suppliers and then get paid by the federal government to provide economic growth to China. Uh, I'll add, uh, not knowing the dynamics on, on, on J.A. Solar in, in, in particular, in many cases the investment tax credit is focused on, on where the project is going to be placed in operation. And we should, and there are ultimately long-term requirements on domestic content and things along those lines. And the Congress should aggressively ensure that the IRS is not awarding financial incentives if, if uh, what that article is laying out uh, in, in those particular situations. And mm -hmm. so my question to Ms. Ross, do you think that the purpose of the Inflation Act was to benefit <coughs> Chinese-owned companies? Uh, the purpose of the Act was, as Congress intended it, to benefit American companies. And it's ending up benefiting Chinese companies and having us more dependent on China. And we're in the situation where we are subsidizing the production of these goods. We're subsidizing the investment, which what we could call supply-side investment. Then we're subsidizing people to buy the goods. We're giving people credits for investing in solar power and putting it in their houses. And it's the same way with these electric vehicles. We give them a $7,500 credit to buy an EV, and then we subsidize the companies for making the EVs. This is no way to have economic growth. No way to have economic growth. I mean, when Apple uh, created the iPhone, there wasn't any subsidies, and people are going around buying iPhones. Only 6% of vehicle sales last year, new vehicle sales, were electric. There are very, very real reasons people don't want to buy electric vehicles, including in some cold climates, they just don't work. So we really need to be thinking about what's good for America. Thank you. Um, I guess my point is we were talking about Ford Motor Company partnering with this Chinese company, but it was an American-owned company, and that's why they're getting the credits. But from what I read, it appears that even if the company is Chinese-owned and operating in the United States, that they would also get the tax incentives. And so I would ask my Democratic colleagues to consider some reforms in this, because I don't think the intention of the acts that were passed last Congress were to benefit Chinese-owned companies. In fact, I thought it was the opposite, that we're trying to incentivize American companies to produce things. And so that is my concern. Uh, Mr. Harrell, in a hearing in March held by the subcommittee, I had an exchange with the Department of Energy Inspector General about the lack of oversight and proper auditing within some of DOE's grant programs. Um, in fact, she said, the Inspector General said that a $56 million grant program, they determined that after the grants were given out, they had enough resources to give the grants out, but not enough resources or manpower to actually audit and see, make sure that they were being used properly. Are you concerned at all that the Department of Energy has enough manpower to audit now billions of dollars in grants that have been authorized? 
I do I do have concerns, and I think they're capable, and I think Congress's oversight uh, authority is going to be real, really critical to that. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I, I think it's really important that we're enforcing and protecting USIP requirements under law, that we are tracking projects from the award all the way to the, the finish and project delivery. Uh, I think it's an, a, a necessity to ensure that we're making sure that taxpayer resources are being used to catalyze American industries and ultimately driving our energy security as a whole. Thank you, and I yield back.